Welcome to Pharmaceutical Calculations, a conceptual approach, lesson 19, isotonic solutions, part 4, preparation of isotonic solutions. In today's lecture, we're going to discuss two more methods of preparing isotonic solutions. Uh, the first one is using a colligative property, freezing point depression, and is used to convert hypotonic drug solutions to isotonic. The second one is rather new, and uh, it discusses a new method to prepare isotonic solutions from hypertonic drug solutions. So let us start with the first method, the freezing point depression method. Now we know that pure water freezes at zero degrees centigrade. Solutions, since they contain solutes, uh, will experience a depression of this freezing point. So they will freeze below zero centigrade. And uh, physiological or biological fluids are known like blood, for example, are known to freeze at negative uh, 0.52 centigrade. So the approach here is to dissolve as much solute as is needed uh, to uh, basically make the freezing point of the solution uh, to be exactly or close to negative 0.52 centigrade. Okay, so let us describe the method using example 7.6. So here you are asked to calculate the concentration of boric acid, the concentration of boric acid, okay, not the amount, but the concentration. Obviously, from the concentration, we can calculate the amount anyway. Uh, in the following isotonic solution, using the freezing point depression method. Uh, so here is the prescription. It's an ophthalmic prescription. It has contains copolamine hydrochloride, 0.25% weight per volume, sodium chloride, 0.15 percent weight per volume boric acid you need to calculate how much you need to have there either a concentration or an amount okay uh, and the total volume of this ophthalmic solution is 15 uh, milliliters now we have the following freezing point depression data the um, delta tf so that means the difference from the uh, uh, freezing point of water so delta t is basically uh, the T freezing of solution minus the T freezing of pure water, okay, uh, TVF. So the um, delta TF or the difference of the freezing point of 1% boric acid is 0.29 centigrade. Delta TF of 0.9% weight per volume sodium chloride is of course 0.52. Uh, so essentially 0.9% sodium chloride freezes at negative 52 centigrade. And the delta TF of 0.25 weight per volume scopolamine hydrochloride is 0 0.08 uh, centigrade. So let us go uh, through step by step here. Uh, what exactly do we do in this method? First of all, recognize that the prescription is asking you to uh, uh, make the solution isotonic using boric acid. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, you need to determine the freezing point depression caused by each ingredient in the prescription and then sum them up. Okay, and then subtract the uh, freezing point depression out of the 50 of, of the 0.52, which is that of pure, which is that of biological fluid. Uh, the result will be the additional lowering of the freezing point of the solution that is needed to become isotonic uh, and then use dimensional analysis to calculate how much uh, uh, or what is the concentration or how much of the substance in this case the boric acid okay is needed to adjust the tonicity of that solution so let us go step by step uh, so this is actually step two now because we know that freezing point uh, the um, uh, boric acid is going to be used to adjust the tonicity here so the first step here is to calculate the freezing point depression caused by the 0.15% um, weight per volume sodium chloride. So this is the ingredient over here. Okay. All right. Um, so the freezing point depression of 0.15% weight per volume sodium chloride, we know that 0.9% uh, causes a freezing point depression of 
52 centigrade. Now that we have a 0.15% sodium chloride, how much is it? So the 0.15% sodium chloride is going to cause uh, a depression of the freezing point of the pure water by 0.87 centigrade. Now we also have the pure drug there, scopolamine hydrochloride is 0.25% wet per volume and this is given directly here so I don't need to uh, apply dimensional analysis here. I don't need a ratio because I know that the freezing point depression of this solution is going to be 0.08 centigrade exactly. So I'm going to have to add this two over here. So the freezing point dep the depression of this solution caused by the drug alone is 0.08. The freezing point depression due to the 0.15% sodium chloride is 0.087. I add them up, that's 0.167, and I subtract it out of 0.52, which is that of biological fluids, and the 0.353 centigrade is the additional freezing point lowering required. So now I'm ready to use the 1% boric acid, which is causing a freezing point depression of 0.29 but I need a freezing point depression of 0.353. How much is the concentration of, of boric acid? So cross multiply and you get 1.217% wet per volume boric acid solution. This is what is needed to make the ophthalmic solution isotonic in the presence of the drug and in the presence of 0.15% sodium chloride. Now multiply by 15 ml, which is the total volume of the prescription and you end up with 0.183 grams of boric acid. So essentially, you're going to have to uh, measure on a balance 0 0.183 grams or 183 milligrams of boric acid and dissolve in the prescription up to 5, up to 15 ml QS with water. And there you have your isotonic uh, solution, ophthalmic solution. Now, of course, uh, you could have solved this problem with the E value. But here, uh, the purpose of the uh, problem is to use the freezing point uh, depression uh, to calculate the amount of boric acid needed to uh, make this ophthalmic solution isotonic. Also, one last point here is that uh, this um, uh, information here, the delta TF, okay, everything you see over here is experimentally measured. It's not theoretical. So for the 1%, boric acid, for example, the 0.9% sodium chloride, the 0.25% scopolamine hydrochloride, these values are very accurate. They are measured experimentally. They are not theoretical. So that's the advantage of this method as well. Now let's move to the second method, which uh, basically prepares isotonic solutions from hypertonic solutions. And of course, the only way to make a hypertonic solution to isotonic is to dilute it. There is no way to add a substance in there, a solute, that will result in lowering of the existing tonicity, right? So we just need to develop a method to uh, uh, dilute a hypertonic solution to a certain amount such that it becomes isotonic. And this method that we are going to develop is is based on expressing the solute concentration as a sodium chloride equivalent concentration. So let us take a look uh, how to do that using example 7.7. So here it's asking you to convert this prescription into isotonic. Obviously it's asking you if this is isotonic, glycerin 5% is hypertonic. Um, and you are given also the A value of glycerin or glycerol, uh, point equal to 0.33. So this is 0.33 grams of sodium chloride are colligatively equivalent to one gram of glycerol. Okay? So how do you make this prescription isotonic? It is hypertonic. Now, I also need to tell you that there's nothing wrong with this prescription because glycerin is passively diffused into the... Um, you know, through the membrane, so eventually, slowly, slowly, is the tonicity of the solution is going to be adjusted. But if you don't want to cause any discomfort to the patient, um, you may uh, you may convert it to isotonic. Uh, so, 
We start with step one, use the E value of glycerin to calculate the sodium chloride concentration osmotically equivalent to 5% glycerin. So here is, is our ratio. I've inverted the ratio here. It doesn't really matter. So 0.33 uh, grams of sodium chloride are osmotically equivalent to one gram of glycerin. Now I have 5% weight per volume glycerin. So what would be the concentration of uh, sodium chloride? You end up with a concentration 1.65 weight per volume. So obviously this is greater than 0.9% um, isotonic saline and therefore 5% of glycerol is hypertonic. We need to dilute it. So how do we dilute it now? So here I'm going to use the C1V1 equals to C2V2, the principle of uh, mass uh, preservation during the process of dilution. I want my uh, final concentration to be equivalent to 0.9%. I know that the initial concentration of glyceryl, of glycerol 5% is equivalent to 1.65% sodium chloride. I have a total of 30 ml. So I solve for the VI. So I have VI... CI is equal to VF CF and I solve for VI okay I solve for VI and my answer is 16.36 ml therefore the isotonic solution can be prepared by diluting 16.36 milliliters um, with 5% glycerol with 13.6 ml of purified water. So obviously I subtracted uh, 30 ml minus 16.36 uh, ml which is equal to uh, 16.36 which is equal to 13.6 ml. Okay, so that's four. So that's right. Alternatively, you could have set up the, the initial volume to be 30 ml and uh, determine the final volume. So in this case, again, I solve, this time I solve for the VF. I'm going to make much more than I need, but that's another method. The initial concentration, again, is 1.65% uh, sodium chloride. That's equivalent to 5% glycerol, okay? Glycerol. Times 30 ml, which is my initial volume now, over 0.9%, which is the acetonic saline, and I ended up with... 55 ml, that's the final volume. Therefore, the volume of water that I need to add into the 30 ml is 25 ml. Now, I leave this uh, question for you guys. Obviously, you can do that by using the E value directly. Use the E value and determine the concentration of isotonic glycerol solution. So, again, the way we prepare isotonic uh, solutions from hypertonic drug solutions is to express the current concentration of the drug in the prescription using the sodium chloride equivalent and then use the uh, mass balance equation C1V1 equals to C2V2 to calculate the final volume or the initial volume depending on how you set up your problem and that's it. And uh, here I have two exercises for you to practice. The first one is using the colligary property, the freezing point depression, to adjust the tonicity of a hypotonic drug solution to hypertonic using boric acid, okay? And the second one uh, is uh, preparing, is for you to prepare an, an isotonic solution from a hypertonic solution. So you're going to have to use the E value of dextrose here uh, to adjust the tonicity of this solution by dilution, of course, and, and make it isotonic. And at this point, I would like to thank you for your attention. Until next time.